It wasn't the brightest idea. But I just thought maybe, just maybe, the military could straighten my life out. It would make my mother proud of me again. It would turn me into somebody that wasn't a freak, that I could walk down the street with my head held high and not worry about somebody calling me a faggot or a tranny or, you know, anything else. I just thought maybe, maybe this could change me. I went to the recruiter's office and I said, I want to join the Navy. But boot camp, you see this video, everything's great, and then they put you on this bus, and then that's when the nightmare begins. As soon as I got to the base, they shave your head. So any idea of me feeling any kind of feminine was out the window with having a bald head. One of the most difficult things about being in the Navy was taking showers. I took showers with 88 other guys at one time. I prayed, Lord, please don't let me get excited in this shower. And there's 88 men around me. I'm going to get my tail whooped. And so a lot of times I'm just like my head's up and just, you know, showering. Just don't look to the left, don't look to the right. But it was some... Um, I'm just going to be real. I know that, you know, I'm very, uh, I'm a very classy girl, but I'm going to be real. At that time, I was in a shower with 88 guys. I mean, come on. It was like something out of a very, very, very bad novel. I just did not want to get found out. That I think that they picked up on my passive feminine energy. I don't know. But a lot of times I found myself uh, at the hands of their pranks. Uh, once they hogtied me to a broomstick and uh, hung me up in between the bunks and left me there for a while. Um, that was pretty fun. In boot camp we had to march down the streets. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. We're marching down the streets. And there is someone that sings the cadence as you're marching down the streets. Somehow I ended up with that job. One, two, three, four, a two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the guy, our leader that was walking us down the street, this white guy, you know, I think he was very proud of our swagger because when I, as I'm singing, he's just kind of a little extra too. He was doing a little extra. So I like to think that, you know, I did bring myself to that moment in time to at least show up and say, this is who I am. When I went to Japan, I realized that behind the walls of our fort was one world, and there was a completely different world outside those gates. And I wanted to explore that world. I wanted to be able to be myself. So yeah, there were times when I did sneak away into the back streets of Japan and find a gay club that I could at least feel like, I don't know, that there was one place in the world where I could drop the facade, that I could drop this whole armor of masculinity and just be myself until one night. Some friends of mine were having a party, or friends if I can call them that. Some shipmates of mine were having a party, and apparently some people had been drinking. And at that point, when I got into the room, a friend of mine brought me into the room. I thought I was just walking into a party. Unbeknownst to me, I was really walking into my own interrogation. Things really, really got scary for a moment in that room. All of a sudden, these questions were turning to, well, why is it then that gay men hit on me if I'm straight? Why do they think I'm gay? Am I gay? I don't know. I don't know if you're gay. You know what I mean? Like, and he, well, say I'm not gay. I'm not gay. Okay, you're not gay. And it got to this final thing. Then why do gay? Well, listen, if you're not gay, then tell them you're. That's not. You're not interested, and then move on. You know, 
it just seemed like there was no answer that I could give this guy that was going to give him any peace. And he just kept getting angry and angry and angry. And all of a sudden, he just grabbed me and took me to this window. We're on the third floor. And he hung me by my ankles out the window and told me to say he wasn't gay. And I don't remember saying he was gay. I don't, I don't even know how I, it came to me being the deciding factor. And that's when it got really serious. That's all of a sudden when the girls started to take notice and be like, okay, no, let's, this can't be going on. And then people started screaming and telling them to bring me back into the window. For that moment, I felt like my life flashed before my eyes as I saw the street lights and branches and, and the ground. I just wondered, when would I hit it? They dragged me back into the door. I heard the door unlock and I just went for it and I never looked back. I chose not to tell. I didn't want to, to rat on anybody. That was not the purpose. I just wanted out. But the people saw me coming out of the captain's office and thought I was ratting on them. So they came up with a story saying that the reason why things had got to the point that they, that they did in the room was because I had offered to give all the guys below jobs wow that this story could actually pass about me like they could actually pass this as truth that something that I would have to wear that you you're saying that I said these things and that I wanted to do these things and so it really hurt me how they just all began to collaborate around this story that I said these things and so I got help with legal they made me sign some papers to say that I was gay and they let me out the military. Years later, I'm happy to say that the don't ask, don't tell has been repealed. And because of that, I have an open case right now with the Naval Board. And hopefully, very soon, they're gonna overturn my discharge from uncharacterized to honorable. I did nothing dishonorable. I only tried to become a better person to protect our country and to live the American dream that eventually became a nightmare. Now I feel like the pieces are coming together. I would love for my honorable discharge to be reinstated and for me to be able to have benefits, health insurance, to be able to go back to school and finish my degree that I started. But instead, life sent me on another path learn about other things, to learn about things that were going to come in handy at this stage of my life.